Hello, welcome to Hope Church Harrogate's message of the week. If you'd like to connect with us, please do get in touch at hello at hopeharrogate.co.uk. We'd love to hear from you. Good. Hi. We're on. Yes, it is my birthday 21 again today. And uh, looking every day of it, I hear. Um, we uh, have uh, the thrill of starting something a little bit new. We've spent a whole year going through the book of Mark together, which has been just the most fantastic journey, I'm sure you'd agree. Um, and you're probably in the process of leaning backwards, getting settled in. I'm actually going to get you to type some stuff into your chat boxes in a minute. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, I've got YouTube up too, so I can see any messages there too, because I want to hear your response to some of the words I'm about to share in a moment. Um, we, we've framed this series, we're calling uh, the next few weeks, Home Is dot 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 uh, and sort of completing the sentence with various things we've got a nice graphic i don't know susio if you want to put it up now briefly um and show everyone it does look really good Ella's done a fantastic job and uh we want to spend the next few weeks really looking at the um opportunities the tensions the challenges of this season that we find ourselves living in home is something that we're becoming uh, very well acquainted with i'm sure you would agree uh, in these days, uh, and I, I wonder if uh, if I say the word home to you, what comes to mind? Why don't you lean forward, type it in the chat box, what comes to mind <clears throat> when we say the word home? If you're on YouTube, you can type it in as well. I will see your answer. I'm going to read a few out. Um, but go on, type it in. What comes to mind when we say home? Uh, it could be, I know for some people, it's a, a lonely place. Others, it's a very crowded place right now. Some of us are on our own. Some of us are in small houses with lots of people. Uh, it could be that it's it's a real place of work for you. It could be that it's a real place of rest. Uh, home might be your delight, uh, or contrary, it might be your despair right now. Why don't you type in what's home for you? I'll read out some of the uh, answers. There are a lot. Let me find where these started. Uh, we've got uh, family. Family, security, a haven, uh, relaxing, warmth, family, 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 uh, office. I know that feeling. This is my office. I've gone for the sitting down approach today. Guinea pigs. Uh, didn't expect that one. Wizard of Oz. Home is interesting. It's warmth and comfort. Family, happiness, comfort, relax, sanctuary. Uh, Steve Williams using yet more of the words that are in my notes for today, just like he did in his contribution during worship. Uh, my wife we've had from YouTube Home is where my wife is. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, great to see some of those things. Um, and I don't know about you, but I've spoken to a lot of people uh, in the last few weeks, and I've heard a lot of different responses uh, and reactions to the concept and the thought of being confined at home uh, in this time. I think you talk to people, don't you? Uh, especially in these last few days as we're awaiting the next announcement of will the lockdown be extended and you get all kinds of different responses that stem from how people are finding home in this time and uh, I've spoken to people who are desperate for it all to be over desperate to get back out into normality whatever that is or whatever that will be uh, and others who are actually quite enjoying being at home in this time and uh, today we're going to look at part of the big story of the Bible where um, home really comes into focus. Uh, and there's a very simple message today, but for the next 20 seconds, it's going to sound complicated. But bear with me, you're going to see that it's simple as well. Uh, you see, today we're going to look at the part of the story where God sends his people, the Israelites, uh, away from home so that they can learn to be at home and to live lives full of hope for their true home. Shall I say that again? We're going to look at the part of the story today where God has sent the people of God, Israel, away from home so that they can learn to be at home and live lives full of hope for their true home. And we're going to do that. That's what we're going to look at because I'm convinced that God has something to say to us about home in this season. I think God wants us to learn how to be at home whilst we're confined at home and that we could learn to live 
lives full of hope for our true home at this time as well. Why don't you type home into the chat box if you're still leaning forward. If you're on YouTube, why don't you type home in, just engage. The beauty of engaging like that, typing it in is, it kind of resets your brain's clock. So I've now got the full amount of time again before you start to get bored and frustrated of watching one face on the screen because you've done something to engage yourself. We're gonna talk about home today and we're gonna to go to Jeremiah chapter 29. So if you've got your Bible, this is your moment, get it out, get your paper copy out. We're gonna read a few verses from Jeremiah 29. You get your second device out if you like. Well done everyone, typing in home on the chat. It's gone electric again. We're going to read Jeremiah 29. We're going to read a few of the verses from the beginning of this chapter. And this will be our home for the next couple of weeks, at least, as uh, I do a couple of parts to begin this new series. And uh, we're going to read this morning. It will come up on the screen if you don't have a Bible with you. We're going to read a few different bits. We're going to read verse 1, then verses 4 to 7. And then verse 10, we're just going to skip a few verses that are, are context forming uh, or are talking about something slightly different. Uh, let's read together, shall we? Jeremiah 29, verse 1. Text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. That's when we're going to move to verse 4. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Did you note? Verse 1 says, Nebuchadnezzar carried them into exile. Verse 4 says, someone else carried them into exile. Just note that for a moment. This is what the Lord says, build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Verse 10, this is what the Lord says when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. You might want to keep that open. Uh, we're going to reference it a couple of times. If you've still got a physical copy of the Bible too, you might want to slip a finger into Philippians chapter 3. We're going to end up there in a few minutes time as well. Home, home is so much more than the four walls you're surrounded by. Have a look at them. Have a look, a look around the room. Four walls. Home is so much more than them. Home, as we've just been listing into the chat box just before, home is about rest. It's about peace. It's about safety. It's about sanctuary. Uh, and for many of us, we uh, have experienced some of the brokenness of home and might not conjure up all of those feelings. But if I asked you to close your eyes and to picture home, it's likely that you would picture something that is like those words I just listed. You picture a place of rest. You might picture being curled up in your duvet with your favorite pajamas on. You might picture a, a leather wing armchair in front of a roaring open fire. If I asked you to picture home, unblemished home, you would probably picture somewhere that was peaceful, a sanctuary, a safe place. And uh, home is so much more than just the house we live in. Human experience, our lives, the things we see all around us, they're about pursuing those things that I've just been talking about. Our hearts are longing for, are chasing after rest, chasing after peace, chasing after sanctuary and safety. We do all we can to try and build those things into our lives. Maybe you've spent the last couple of decades of your life working really hard so that you can get the bigger house so that it's a little bit more peaceful for you. It's, it's a sanctuary. 
maybe you've been working hard to move to a different area, to move to Harrogate, where it's safer and you're more secure. Maybe you have been searching hard for people or a person who's going to bring that sense of peace and security into your life. You've been investing yourself in relationships to find that. Human experience, human life is pursuing these things that are what home truly is. We, as a race, as a species, we, as a, as a species, humanity, we long for home. We're longing for that place where we can be content, where we can rest. And our house as that home is really a very modern understanding. That's not how people would have understood it for all the years before, I guess, the middle of the last century. Before that, home would have been about the dirt, the dirt that defined you. Where your feet trod, where your ancestors were from and were buried, the, the dirt you were born out of, that was what home was. It was a much bigger thing than just the four walls that surround you when you're asleep. You see, home, home is truly about place. It's about community. It's about belonging. And like many people, Jess and I have been enjoying some Netflix. Uh, other streaming services do exist uh, in this time of lockdown. And we recently watched a program that was basically written especially for us, part period drama, part history of football. It's perfect. If you know us, it's, we, it's it, made up. And uh, let me offer that out there as a peacemaking tool for your homes if you, like us, are divided in what you'd like to watch. It's called The English Game. Uh, it's Netflix produced. Julian Fellows, who wrote, um, produced Downton Abbey, was one of the guys involved in it. And it's all about the history of, of football, the birth of football as we know it. And um, in it, there are these two Scottish guys who leave Scotland to move to Darwin in Lancashire, this small, impoverished mill town. Uh, and in doing so, they, they move to play football. But in doing so, what really happens is that they find their place. And it's six episodes long, six hours. And, uh, and the whole thing is this incredible story of rich and poor finding their place. And it explores the themes of what helps them to belong, uh, of what acceptance is about. Uh, and really it tracks these two guys in particular. <clears throat> and through the ups and downs, the roundabouts, the mishmash of life, they come to belong in this community that wasn't their home, but it becomes their home. And you see that home for this whole town that's built around this mill. Uh, no one's got two pennies to rub together, but the whole of life, this whole sense of place and home and belonging and identity is, is wrapped up all together for this, this community and is expressed through football, although other expressions uh, are possible as well. Home for that, that community that you get the insight into in, in the English game is about place, it's about identity, it's about where you belong. And the same goes on for the rich Old Etonians on the other side of the story uh, in a slightly different way. Home is about where you belong. Because friends, our hearts, you will have experienced this in your life. They long for a home, they long for somewhere to fit. Yeah, you experience that in your life? Longing to find somewhere that you fit. Longing to find somewhere where you're accepted and known. Uh, Augustine, he tapped in and explained this basic desire of the human heart. He said, you have made us for yourself, O Lord. And our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. I don't know if you've heard that saying before. For me, it makes so much sense of the human experience. You have made us for yourself, O oh Lord, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. You see, the great irony of the story we read back at the beginning from Jeremiah is that God's people had been taken from Jerusalem, abducted, kidnapped, taken prisoner by the Babylonians, taken from their home, taken from their place, and that it happened because Jerusalem wasn't enough for them. The place that was their home wasn't enough for them. 
So they went seeking after more. And that's why God let their enemies come and conquer them and take them away from their home. Their home was not enough. They longed for more. And when you consider that Jerusalem had the most incredible temple, which was the home of God, God himself lived in Jerusalem. It's incredible that they ever went looking for more. Jeremiah begins his prophecies in chapter 2, verse 5. He puts it like this. He says that the people chased worthless things and ended up worthless themselves. I don't know if you've ever seen that happen to someone that you know. Go chasing after all kinds of things and end up losing all sense of worth. Maybe, maybe that's your experience. I can certainly relate to various episodes of my life with that phrase. You go chasing after worthless things and you end up worthless yourself. And the people of God in this story have ended up worthless because they chased worthless things and they end up far from home. And God speaks to them through the prophet Jeremiah. And he says, the reason that you've been taken away from your homes is that you need to learn to be at home. It's the most incredible thing. And we're going to learn, we're going to look at verses four to seven. We're going to learn something about how to be at home when not at home. We're going to do that next week. But today I just want to zoom in on this promise that finishes the section that we read at the beginning. Zoom, zoom in on verse 10. Because God promises that in 70 years time, he says, I will come and I will bring you back to this place. What does he mean, this place? Jerusalem? That's where they've been taken from. That's the contrast he's drawing. He's saying, I'm going to bring you back to Jerusalem, to this place. Well, why there? Well, it's the place where I am. This place is where I am. God's saying, I'm going to bring you back to where I am. God's saying, I'm going to bring you back to me. I'm going to bring you back to me because the point here that we've read this morning is very simple. Home is not four walls. Home for them is not the dirt of Jerusalem where their feet have trod every day. No, home is with God. Home is where they belonged. They belonged with God. Their place was with him. Their rest was with him. The place they were going to find peace was with him. He promised he was going to come and bring them back to be with him. You have made us for yourself, O oh Lord. Our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Home is where we are loved. It's what so many people wrote in the chat box. It's where we find acceptance, which at its best is what family, which is the most common answer that was posted up here, is about. Knowing that we're loved and finding acceptance is what makes us feel that we belong. That's the longing for home. And 70 years later, you might know the story, the people of God, they do go back to Jerusalem. But the great sadness is they find that God's not there. And it was actually a later point. It's a later point that God comes and truly brings his people back to himself. That's what Jesus coming is all about. Sandy told us earlier when she was quoting from John 3.16, amazing how the prophetic contributions tied in so incredibly with what I have to share today. Jesus came. God says, I will come to you. And friends, Jesus came. He came to find what was lost. He came to bring us home to God. He came to reveal the love in which we find our acceptance, in which we find our place to belong. Friends, you'll never find, you'll never find peace in bricks and mortar. You'll never find love in a physical place. It can help. It's important. We'll look at that next week, but if that's all you're banking your hope on, you'll never find it. Our hearts will find rest and peace 
and safety and security, our hearts will find home only really in one place, which is in the love of God. It's in being with God. That's what this is about. He says, I'm going to come to you and I'm going to bring you back to this place. I'm going to bring you back to me. Because if you want to find home, you're only going to find it in one place. It's the place you were made to be, which is right slap bang next to God's heart, deep in his love. The place where you are loved and known and experience acceptance. And I just want to speak to those right now who you would use the word frustrated to sum up how you're feeling, because I know that so many people are feeling deeply frustrated that you just can't find peace. And I think this season of being confined to our homes, it really intensifies that challenge, really intensifies some of the dissatisfaction that we find in life. And the truth is, you're not going to find it in your four walls. And you're not going to find it in the people that live in the four walls with you. And you're not going to find it in success at work. And you're not going to find it in online shopping. And you're not going to find it when we get released and it's back to some semblance of normality. Our hearts will only find rest in God. And if you're deeply frustrated right now, the place to go is to the Father. The place you're going to find security and rest and home is in the love of God. The Israelites chased it everywhere and they couldn't find it. And that's why God sent them into exile, into enemy territory, to learn what it is to be at home and that it comes from being with God. But they weren't just to learn what it is to be at home. They were to learn what it is to live lives full of hope for their true home. Because we do find our home right now in the love of God, yet, as Ben was talking about earlier, we have this frustration because we still recognize and experience and are caught up in the brokenness of our world. Untimely death, the strains and pains of relationship, the things that are beyond our control. The love of God is here and is here in an incredibly tangible way, a way that can transform our experience of life. But we still experience the brokenness of now because it's both now and not yet. If you've got your finger in Philippians 3, it's moment of respite is here. Flick over the page. Who writes in Philippians 3, 20, our citizenship, our home, the place we belong, is in heaven. And we eagerly await a saviour from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Adam, Jesus has already come. He came from there. Yeah, who knows? He's writing afterwards. Paul, more than anyone, knew that Jesus was the saviour who had come from heaven. Jesus has come for us. He has revealed the loving kindness of God in which we find home. But he's going to come again. And just like the Israelites were to live lives full of hope for their true home, even though they found home, we can find home in the love of God and live lives full of hope for our true home, which is to come. Because, friends, Jesus will come again, not to take us off to some other place, not to take us off to some other distant heavenly reality, not to drag us all into the earthly city of Jerusalem. No, he's going to come and he's going to make his home with us. Revelation 21 says that he's going to come and make his home with us. He's going to make the earth his home. And that in that moment, all the frustrations will be done away with and the true sense of belonging of God and his people find in one another true home. Because God has made us for himself. And our hearts are restless until they find their rest in him. Friends, God is teaching us something in these days. And I wonder if I can just poke you to point it out one final time. 
He wants us to learn how to be at home in him. In his love, to know his peace, to experience true acceptance and belonging and real rest. And it doesn't finish there. We can know what it is to live full of hope for our true home, which will enable us to travel through the brokenness of now. There's so much more. You might be the most contented person in this Zoom conversation or on YouTube. Your life might be characterized by peace, yet the truth is that there is more in the love of God for you just as there is for those of us that are frustrated with the status quo. God is teaching us to find our home in him, that we might live lives full of hope for our true home as we travel there together. It's very simple, very timely. I think incredibly life-changing. I'd love just to finish by praying. We're not going to sing to close today. would love just to pray for us. I would love to pray, especially for those who are deeply dissatisfied, as I already said, who are frustrated, who are lacking peace. But I want to pray for us all because we're all there to some degree. That's the human experience. That's life on earth is those things. And I want to pray for us for a deep experience of the love of God by the Holy Spirit. I think it's so easy to Think back fondly to those times when we're all gathered together in one space and we're aware of the presence of God with us. So thick and tangible, those moments of just knowing God in the room. And it's so easy to, to remind ourselves of those things and to forget that he's with us right now. And that we don't need a room full of other people to experience the spirit being poured out into our lives. And I wonder, could you take a moment, close your eyes. Just close out the distraction of everything around you, all the other people on the screen. Make it you and God for a moment. If you've got your kids, why don't you invite them in? Let's just turn our eyes to, to our Father for a moment. I want to pray. I'm going to pray that the Holy Spirit would come and would fill us with the love of the Father. It's what Romans 5, 5 talks about. It says the Holy Spirit is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Sorry, the love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It says that the hope will not put us to shame. The love of God is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. It's a tangible spiritual thing that goes on as the Holy Spirit pours the love of the Father into your heart. And that's what I'm praying for right now, for each and every one of us, that we would have fresh revelation of the love of God and how we find our home in that place, because we know that that's the place we belong. Friends, there is peace in abundance for each of us this morning. There is acceptance that overwhelms. There is a belonging that puts us into a deep state of rest that can only be found in the love of God. And so I pray, Holy Spirit, come fill each of us now, everyone in this Zoom call, everyone watching on YouTube today and in the future. We pray right now, come. Holy Spirit, come fill hearts with the love of the Father, that we would know the power and the transformation of Jesus's coming to us, the transformation that it enables, that it brings, the revealing of God's love that was bought by Jesus. John 3.16, as Sandy read earlier, the reconciliation as we find our place with God, as Steve quoted from Romans 5 earlier. I want to invite you just, this is your moment to switch from passive to active and to pray for yourself. Tell God that you want to find home in his love. Your words are powerful. I'm not the priest. Jesus is the priest. You can go directly to him. I want to encourage you, engage your heart right now and tell God that you want to find your home in his love. Mike, want to put your hands out just to receive? Tell him that you know it's possible because of Jesus, that you know Jesus' death and resurrection have cleared away every barrier that Jesus has shown you what love is and that it's wrecked you for anything else ask the Holy Spirit to come and fill you and your life with the love of God ask him for rest and true peace today 
in the middle of the frustrations of life. He will come. He will meet with you. He is doing even now. Holy Spirit, we do thank you that you're so present with us, our ever-present help in times of need. Heavenly Father, we're so amazed at your great love for us, the love in which we find our home. Jesus, we humbled by the price that you paid that we could come to a place like this, that we could not just see that love, but experience it and know it, that we could build our home in it. We pray right now, Spirit of God, for fresh revelation, for encounter for each of us. That love would redefine again our reality right now. And that hope would fill our hearts for our true home with God in his love forever. As our father comes to make his home with us. Jesus, we love you. Father, we're amazed at your love. Our final prayer is receive the love of God by the power of the Spirit. Let it transform you afresh today. In Jesus' name. Amen.